Poor Richard Spencer, turns out he's broke, lonely and sad. He is dealing with some serious legal issues as a result of organizing that hate rally in Charlottesville. And he's having difficulty paying his legal bills. So this is according to reporting from the New York Times where they write that leaders in Whitefish, Montana say Spencer, who once ran his National Policy Institute from his mother's $3 million summer house, <laughs> is now an outcast, unable Aww. to get a table at many of its restaurants. Aww. His organization has dissolved. Meanwhile, his wife has divorced him and he is facing trial next month in Charlottesville, Virginia over his role in the deadly 2017 neo-Nazi march. That's where Heather Heyer was run over by a white nationalist. But nonetheless, Richard Spencer says he can't afford a lawyer. Uh, well, it, you know, it's so tough out there for a Nazi. Mm. Uh, and, and so, this guy is actually wants us to have sympathy for him. I mean, he's constantly crying. So about, oh my God, the services won't let me use PayPal to get money from fellow Nazis. And what's a poor Nazi to do? And this is taking my freedom away. I'm just trying to take the freedom and lives away of Jews and blacks and Muslims and uh, and Latinos and gay people mm -hmm. and women. And I was trying to, you know, push an ideology that would take away all their freedoms and then eventually maybe murder them. Uh, and now I can't get a seat at a restaurant. They took my freedom away. But they say all that stuff pretty genuinely. They they have. Such an overwhelming sense of entitlement. They think, well, I, now I can't even take away your rights in, in peace and comfort. You know, and I forget which um, person said this, but it's, it's really a genius quote. It's, I hope I get it correct. Um, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes, yeah, right? And yeah. so actions have consequences. And he decided to be uh, the public face of hatred. And white nationalism in this country. And as a result of that hate march in Charlottesville, a counter protester was killed, was run over. And, you know, look, I don't know. Uh, I was gonna say something super salty, but I'm gonna hold back, believe it or not. Okay, uh, so yeah. look, here's the thing, right? Um, so there's a guy, another guy in England who's an actual uh, avowed Nazi, uh, whereas Richard Spencer would say, no, 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 I'm just a white nationalist. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, that's wow, okay, okay, well, I didn't know you were that kind and decent. Um, so uh, England then uh, put out some fake story about a real estate agent. Uh, you, you have the details on that? Because I yeah. love the way, because guys, one of the focus of the story is not just ha ha on the Nazis and the white nationalists. Uh, but the town actually fought back in M Montana, and uh, and and the way that they had the the Nazis, because uh, Anglin is again is an actual Nazi, um, uh, targeted a Jewish real estate agent. It made me sick to my stomach. And you know what? This happened a couple of years back. She's okay now, but you know, in a sense, we all failed when that happened. Everyone should have gone to Whitefish, Montana, and said, "Not on our watch." And form like some sort of protective barrier to protect the people who were in real danger at the time. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna give you uh, some context before we get to the, the realtor who ended up getting harassed by these uh, white nationalists and Nazis. Uh, so Richard Spencer uh, was operating out of his mother's home. Right in in Whitefish, and so Sherry Spencer, Richard Spencer's mom, asked her real estate agent Tanya Gersh like what she should do. Right, and so Tanya Gersh tells the New York Times, "quote I said Sherry, if this were my son, I would go ahead and sell the building. I would donate some money to something like the Human Rights Network to make a statement and publish that you don't believe in the ideologies of your son." And she said, "Thank you, Tanya. That's exactly what I should do." Now, at that point, the realtor, Tanya Gersh, was planning on selling the property, by the way, without making a profit. And Sherry Spencer later emailed her saying that she no longer wanted to work with her, right? Now, two weeks later, in December of 2016, Ms. Spencer posted an article on the open publishing platform Medium accusing Gersh of using the threat of protest to blackmail her into selling. Spencer said that he and his former wife had written the article published under his mother's name, 
Of course, I knew it was in the mom, even back when we first covered this story. I gotta be honest, I totally missed this story, totally mm -hmm. missed this story. Um, he repeated, meaning Richard Spencer, repeated their claims against Miss Gersh, adding that she had called his mother, not the other way around. So like, it's all made up, it's not his mom claiming that. He writes uh, this medium post. Uh, claiming to be his mother, which is pretty gross. At I can't that point, believe a white nationalist would lie like that. Throw his own mother under a bus. I right? mean, it's almost like it, you know he, he was pretending to be someone else, hmm. like he was hiding his identity, like putting on a hood so people can't see you. It does seem like that. Huh, yeah. interesting. Now, uh, Gersh at that point received uh, hundreds of text messages, emails, and also Christmas cards threatening her life. Uh, her voicemail filled up uh, with all sorts of uh, threats uh, in a single day. Uh, and and then she got all sorts of hateful comments, right? So she was targeted. And keep in mind, like sometimes when I, I read about private people, private citizens getting that kind of hate, it's not that I minimize it in my mind, but we deal with it on a daily basis that I think that we're desensitized to it. But imagine what it's like as someone who's never dealt with it before. You're a real estate agent, you never deal with this kind of stuff, right? It's it's traumatic and it's scary. And I remember the very first time I was targeted by crazy people online, right? It was pretty scary. Oh, and no, and they're talking about how she's Jewish and they're gonna target her for because right. of that. And now Whitefish is a more liberal town, a resort town in Montana. But it's in the middle of Montana, and there and and not look. Some people showed up to help, and the community stuck together. Great a couple of wonderful rabbis there that that helped and was strong and brave and brought in ADL and others, etc. But overall, on a day to day, night to night basis, they were on their own, and that was a that's a super scary place to be. Yeah, as these guys are. I mean, we had resurgent Nazis and white nationalists threatening the lives of Jewish Americans who had done nothing wrong, right? That, that's where we were in the Trump days. So now that they won't let him sit in the restaurants and he's getting sued and the criminal charges, etc. Yes, Alicia. finally, rule of law. Because if you don't have rule of law, you're gonna have lawlessness, anarchy, and it's gonna lead down a super dark path. Absolutely. All right, score one for the law. There are a lot of great ways to watch the Young Turks, but is there a best way? Of course, the best way is to watch live. Tune in weekdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. You get our uncensored, unapologetic version of the news that you won't get anywhere else. Watch us live.